Aloha and Shalom. Welcome back to the channel. This is Code Searcher and I am Jonathan. All right. So first of all, let me just say the last update that I did, I pulled that down some 20,000 views. Let me tell you why. Well, it's because when I did that video, Darla and I had been running and gunning for about three days and I was extremely exhausted. I had been cramming a lot of information over the week and I had some facts running together and shout out to the brother that pointed it out. And so I pulled the, pulled the plug on it and pulled that video down. It's not about the views. I don't want to jeopardize um, the credibility and the accuracy of this channel. So um, that's my statement. Now, I had facts running together. I was using meters instead of feet. And I think the other thing was uh, I said something about 200 years and I was actually thinking should have been saying 20 years um anyway here we are 26th and what's going on now i want to share some of the images and um some of the information that's out there now now i have to be careful guys because there are some people who are really particular about their stuff and don't want you sharing their stuff unless they get paid for it um and incidentally Someone made a comment on one of my last videos about people um, starting GoFundMe accounts and PayPal's um, and, you know, exploiting this situation. Let me just say something to the comment that was made on my channel about the PayPal link on my video. All of my videos have always had PayPal links because my channel, for, for the most part, is supported um, by some donations from my subscribers. As YouTubers, you, you may know, uh, they change things around here and you can't really make any any living off of the ads, right? So that's why that link was there. But because someone misunderstood what that was, I pulled them off all, all, all the videos concerning Hawaii because I don't want to be, you know, misrepresented in that being there. And anyone thinking that I'm trying to exploit this situation, by no means are we doing that. YouTube is full-time job for me. I have a Hebrew school and teach codes that we also uh, have income to come on. But for the duration of this, if I'm doing anything on this event, out of respect for the Hawaiian people and the locals who are affected, I'm not going to have a PayPal link on these videos. Okay, so with that being said, let me go over the information I got for you guys. All right, so uh, let's back up and just look at the USGS information from, well, I think it was the 22nd when we last spoke. So right about uh, the 21st, let's start there. Most of the flow um, that was coming out of 20 and 22 at that time uh, was entering the ocean at two little small points not far from each other in um, Mackenzie State Park um, there was still a lot of burping and, and uh, fireworks going off on 17 on the far end I wonder if we can pull in closer there we go so Fisher 17 you, you may have seen we have some pictures of that there's a really great aerial of that uh, at night of this Fisher just kind of spurting right uh, the action moved back up the rift to around 20 and 22 um, and really started pumping out a lot of lava guys we were on the scene and was you know witnessing this firsthand darling got some great shots on the 35 millimeter um, we got some really good 4k GoPro also is on the channel um, and then we tried to get back the next day. Wasn't able to, but it was the day after that we got back and the whole scene was completely changed. There was, it was like another world really. Um, hard to make out where, where things used to be because lava had started. Man, it's just, it's hard to put some words. So on that video that you saw that has a huge crack in the road, that goes downhill. Uh, I don't know, 50 feet, 60 feet from the top of the hill, I'm just guessing, to all the way at the bottom where the fissure was. 
all that filled up. Huge amounts of lava. Yeah, there's there's photographs I'll show you on, on here on Facebook that just is towering. 20 and 22 and around that area is a huge pool. Also, very tall cones uh, and uh, relentless lava flow coming out of that. Uh, there's some rivers that are moving. It's kind of like channels. Let me take it to the back. Come on, USG. All right, here it is. So here, here you see in the thermal imaging uh, where those rivers are making it into the sea. Uh, all the other, the, the darker lava outline that stares the cooler lava as it's cooled off. Um, the hotter lava is, is on top of it and in chambers. My apologies for the dogs. All right, where were we? Fisher 22 and... Uh, from that line back is very active right now and is getting increasingly more so. Um, there's pooling up, 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 up top here. Um, and this is, well, we could go and look at the actual next thermal. I don't know why I didn't think of that. So as that is rendering, let's go to the next day. This is the 24th. Let's just look at the progressive here. Is at one point these two um, actually merged, uh, and you'll see that happen quite frequently, where where the lava path will change. I would imagine all of this in the center will probably fill in at some point. Um, there's a huge amount of pooling up in this area of 22, 19, 6, and forgive me if I miss numerate these fissures guys it's very confusing in some cases because the numbers are not in sequential order they jump all over the place because of the action uh, was down rift back up rift down rift um so bear with me we're at fissure 6 19 and 22 which have pretty much merged into one big lava pool uh and it's same trend is is going back up the rift doing the same thing uh, we kind of hoped that this this flow here would fill in there's a there's a large um, crater right there in that area let's see if we can see it on this here it's actually three it's quite deep uh, and maybe if if some of this volume went in there it would um, spare the stuff down down the slope there all right, so shout out to Andrew Hara uh, for his amazing work. Guys, if, if you want to go to this map, I'll put a link down below. It's a progressive map. There are multiple teams that are working to update this. They're all over the ground. Andrew is one of those. And uh, you can find pictures posted um, all over. And if you go over to the left side, you have your map legend. And you can see the image galleries from Andrew Hara. Shout out to that that's an amazing photographer and documenter on the ground, guys. He's phenomenal. Um, you can remove those to simplify the um, map if you'd like. But those that want to see pictures of the of what is going on, Andrew's got a lot of content on that map of the area and, and all over. He's got an amazing access. We were able to access some areas and... Uh, we, we focused on Leilani and the geothermal um, plant uh, for a few days to, to see what the progression would be of the amount of lava that's piling up at the top there. It's actually pooling and is, you know, inching slowly toward PGV. Um, now, as this gets taller and all of this is this same thing is happening, all of this is getting taller. And it's breaking on both sides. As you can see, this is flowing on one side and the other, which is, has increased. This is all new from what we saw the other day, guys. The, the video you saw from me on uh, Kapili and um, the next street over. And then we were on uh, Luana last night. Completely changed. Uh, actually, in the video that you're going to see later when I get it put up, uh this is a river right here um a pool on top of this slow moving uh, uh in front of it it's kind of being pushed and you'll see in some of the video we're going to see on the facebook post there 
Um, it's being pushed very slowly. Um, very sad because it, some people could be cut off that are still in the area. Um, dangerous place to be, by the way. There's a lot of gas uh, in the yellow areas of venting and gas. Is is pretty. It's pretty bad. Uh, we were down on the Nohia uh, end, documenting down there, and we were getting readings anywhere from um, 10 parts per million to 60 parts per million. We were very well prepared. Please don't, you know, message me with your concern of how reckless we have been on this uh, coverage, guys. We are very pre well prepared. I was the United States Marines, and and you know, am qualified. And using a gas mask. The EPA guy was out the other day and he looked at my gas mask and he was, he kind of shook his head. And I was like, why are you shaking your head? He's like, you know, I don't know if this is adequate. You you, you really need a lot of training for, for this to learn how to don a mask and get a good seal and, and all of this. And he's standing there talking to a Marine. And I was like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm sure. Yeah. And so, uh, but, <laughs> you know, very good gear, guys. There's, there's no reason he should have been concerned about that mask. It can handle the uh the so2 there um that's an mbc mask and by the way um so nohia a lot of gas as you'll see in the footage six ten to sixty parts per million uh it looks like the trend now for those that have been asking me for the area down south uh, i've told you before it didn't look like you guys were gonna have any danger that may change and, and let me just stress this this is not an absolute this is a possibility, and it's something to, to you know, pay attention to. There are more cracks that are opening <coughs> toward the mountain, going back up. All of this area right here is pretty much dead, guys, from, from all the gas that's just inundating that area. Uh, we were down that way with third phase of moon, and uh, it was completely silent when you would normally hear Cokey frogs and birds and things like that. Nothing. So it's very unfortunate. Um, it's very da dangerous to be down in that area. Th this whole area down, in, you know, below where the gases are going should be evacuated. Um, the Sea View era, Cal area, Calapana, Gahena, um, should also be completely evacuated because that gas is, is going to be. Um, focused on that area actually the trade winds are trained so it's going to be light and variable winds but anyway the trend will probably be that they come back down that way um, and also we could probably see some more vents open further up um, the fishers up from 21 and, and those that are really active started going off last night and w was doing the same thing that happened to 21 and 23 area um when 18 and 17 was the dominant fishers going off on on the far end in Kokoho. uh so what happened was that pretty much stopped being the focal point and it looked like everything was uh, coming up the rift there and, and indeed the evidence is there we saw it there last night around nokia um the same trend we saw there on kuhukai, uh, kuhukai that uh, what started off as a small fissure with spurting turned into a huge mountain, um, you know, some 48 hours later with several feet, I'm guessing 20, 30 feet of, of lava and cooling on top. Most of it is dumping it off toward the sea, um, but there is a chance. Guys, we saw it. Uh, it, it there are places where it's, it's spilling over the back and kind of flowing. It doesn't look like a, a major worry and there are people that are monitoring this constantly from the geothermal guys are 24 hours a day seven days a week they're not leaving they're watching this and um they will let us know if there's any danger all right so the fisher 14 21 3 and 4 pooling is mo moving and has been moving up kapili street over the kahukai and potentially going to flow down toward Pohiki, uh, Pohokiki, down into the thermal venture uh, grounds there. Uh, this is not what we want to see. We have friends 
all in the area on the other side. But this is the danger zone for, you know, the, the community. We don't want to see the lava go into this place. It's potential there be some uh, hydrochloric releases of some sort. Now, there is a history with this place, and it's not very well liked by the community. Very touchy subject, and I got to be very careful that I'm not held liable for anything that I say, because I'm just a little guy with a, with a big mouth, guys, okay? So, uh, this is what I know from Ormat, Israeli company. Incidentally, we're Israeli. And uh, funny thing, I noticed something about the name that they chose for this place, Ormat. Ormat. Now, we teach a course in Hebrew and code searching. And so it's kind of my thing to look at the entomology and the meanings of Hebrew words. And basically, that word, and I'm not sure if it's an acronym or not. I haven't done a lot of research on Ormat, guys, so bear with me. I do have people searching and uh, looking into that company in the history. But it's basically two words, or and mot. First word being light. Or, it also can mean air, to breathe, ventilate. He aired, he ventilated, was aired, was ventilated. Uh, it can mean light, brightness, daylight, ugar, also or. And the second element, uh, derivatives uh, of light formed on the an 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 analogy of aram. Um, and that's all it's got for or. And then, mat, which is death. Did you know that? Mat is death, or dead. Dead, dead person, corpse. Mat. Dead light. Why would they call a power plant dead light? Or death light? Anybody? It's kind of peculiar, right? Now, again, maybe it's an acronym, but that word, if you broke it down in Hebrew, is dead light. Now, another uh, uh, you know, spelling of that word using an ayin uh, would, would literally be on a high hill, haughty, arrogance. Um, what was the other? Just a few off the top of my head. But uh, again, you can see that with Puna Gina Thermal because they're on a high hill and haughtiness and maybe some arrogance. Yes, maybe I had an interaction with some Israeli pilots. Didn't have any words for me, only to each other in Hebrew. Uh, I didn't at the time know where I was. I come in the back way trying to get a vantage point and ended up on in Geothermal's compound there and actually tried to get in a conversation with two of the pilots there, which were Israeli pilots. Didn't have anything to say to me. So, haughty, arrogance, high place. All right, so the concern for those that are in um, Seaview that are asking me, were they in any danger? This would be the only scenario I, I, I could see, other than the gases and things that are coming down, that if fissures open up, up in this area and as you can see with the flow there there is a possibility that uh, it could make it to the sea through sea view now that's a leap I get that I'm not trying to worry or panic anybody I'm just being real if they're seeing fissures and cracks open up with steams it's an indication that the lava is moving back up the rift there it is a small possibility it's something to, to you know make sure you watch don't be slipping. All right. So anything I want else I want to share with you before we go a little further. And again, you can go to the volcanoes.ugs.gov, which is the um, professionals monitoring this guy. Um, USGS. They got all the information, all the maps that are interactive and full of information over there. Um, I'll also put the community based uh, map interactive map with several people are working on mahalos to you guys that are doing this we love this kind of information and visuals to get a you know an idea of where things are going on uh, i'll put a link to that down in the bottom as well 
Um, but let's go to Facebook. By the way, some things on Facebook I cannot share because people get upset. But I got permission from Isaac um, to share some of his stuff. And then, of course, uh, we have the USGS. Again, this video is from the USGS, guys. If you want to see all this stuff, go to my page, friend request me, and uh, you can see it there. I can't put it on YouTube for everybody, all the stuff that's there. But you can see some great footage of, um, I think this is Kapili Street. Yeah. And Leilani of the lava coming down it. Um, I did put a post up of, of uh, Akaika Marzo, uh, the local, has been a leader and a, an inspiration to a lot of people in this community. Shout out to that, brother. Uh, here's some, some of Isaac's footage. Now, we'll blow this up because I did get permission from Isaac. This is a time lapse uh, of that area. Shout out to Isaac. Thank you, brother, for letting me share your video. And then uh, I think there's a couple more. Here's here's one from Andrew Hara from above showing the, the river making it down to the sea at McKenzie. Uh, more Andrew Hara. Again, guys, if you want to see some of this stuff, go to Andrew's page. Um, he's got tons and tons of very beautiful photographs of these fissures going off like this one here. Uh, May 21st, excuse me, 24th. See, what, what, trying to do a <laughs> video when you're tired. Things just come out. Uh, here is from uh, Brother Victor's house. And this is uh, from Tess Cabrera. And uh, as you can see, what was down below... A hill is almost level to where that house, that house is sitting on the hill. So there was a hill you had to come up from, from one side, top of the hill, and then go down on the other side. And that house is sitting on that hill with lava in front and now cutting this brother off from his house there in uh, Leilani. Spectacular photos. Um, here's some more from Isaac. Time lapse. This is an area we were down last night. Uh, all of that is cooled off, but it is fast moving. Incidentally, if uh, one of those, same street, this is the street I'm talking about right here. This is from Andrew. Um, I don't want to show his video. I didn't get permission to show his video, but um, I don't want to get dinged. <laughs> I can't afford another one, guys. Really? All right, so I'll put the links down to um, all the information down below, and we'll try to get things updated for you. I do have more content that is coming in, more uh, aerial shots, more on-the-ground shots from the truckers that are all around. Shout out to everybody who is working hard, Isaac, and all you guys that are amazing in getting the footage and the content that you're getting. Be careful and be safe. Uh, uh, aloha. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Shalom.